This is the 12th video in our series, looking at how you set up and configure a Synology NAS running Distation Manager 7. In our previous video, we created a number of network shares for our NAS. However, in order for our users to be able to access our shares, we still need to create user accounts and assign those accounts with access permissions. While you might expect us to now take a look at creating user accounts, Instead, we're going to take a look at how we assign access permissions through groups. As you may have already worked out, a group is an easy way to assign access permissions that will be consistent for everyone while also being easy to update. So in this video, we're going to review the default groups on our NAS, edit one of those groups, and then create two new groups to give those groups access to specific network shares. First, let's log into Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the desktop of our DSM, if we select Control Panel and then choose the option User and Group, if we select the Group tab, you can see that we have three default groups. As these groups were created when we first installed Distation Manager, Let's take a look at the access permissions that each of these groups have been assigned with. If we highlight Administrators and then select Edit, when the Administrator group opens, by selecting Permissions, we can see that this group has read-write access to all of the network shares created on our NAS. This makes sense as our Administrators group is designed to allow its members to have full access over our NAS and any data stored on it. While it is possible to add a user to the administrator's group, this is considered bad practice. Instead, if you need a user to be able to, for example, reset user passwords, you would use the delegate function, which is something that we will be looking at in a separate video. Let's take a quick look at the permissions in the HTTP group. As the HTTP group is used to execute web-based tasks, it is very important to the running of our NAS. However, as it is not a group that should contain any user accounts, there's no need for the HTTP group to have access permissions to our network shares. Finally, we have the Users group, which is a group that we're going to edit. When we create a new user account, that account will automatically get added to the Users group. So every user of our NAS will automatically receive permissions to any services or network shares that this group has been given access to. On our NAS, we created four network shares, accounts, manuals, public, and software. So let's edit our users group to give it a generic set of permissions that we want all of our users to have. The accounts share is a folder that contains household budgets, ledgers, receipts, and general finances. So as this is not a folder that we want everyone to have access to, we will not be assigning our users group with access permissions. Instead, we will need to create a new group for any users who need access to the accounts folder. The manuals folder is a folder that contains the manuals and user guides for any devices or appliances in our home. So we want all of our users to be able to read the contents of this network share, but not edit or delete any files. The public folder will act as a scratch area on our network to allow our users to easily share files and folders. So we need to make sure that all of our users have full access to this folder by ticking the read write option. The final folder, software, is a place where we store installation files for software programs that we want our users to use. So while we do not want our users to be able to add new software to this folder, we do want them to be able to open or download installation files to their computers. So it is for this reason that the software folder will receive a tick for read-only access. Let's select Save and take a look at how we create new groups. As we only want certain users of our NAS to be able to access our accounts folder, to do this we're going to create a new group called Power Users. Then if a user is added to this new group, not only will they be able to read and write to our accounts folder, 
but because they also are part of the users group, they will continue to have read-write access to the public and read only writes to the manuals and software folders. Let's select Create to open the group creation wizard. First, we need to give our group a name. While this name can be anything that we like, we're going to call it Power Users. As our group name is not all that descriptive, in the group description, we're going to provide a summary of what this group is for. When we choose Next, we're asked to select the members for this group. However, as we have not yet created any user accounts, we will simply select Next. We now need to assign our accounts folder with read-write permissions. However, we will not be assigning permissions to any other folders, as any users added to this group will inherit permissions from any other groups that they're part of. We're now asked to assign quotas to our shares. This option basically allows us to limit how much disk space on our NAS all of the members in this group can use. So you might use this function if your NAS is being used in a small business so that you can control how much storage space a department can have. After selecting Next, we can assign application permissions. However, as all of our users will inherit application permissions from the users group, there's no need to make any changes to these options. Finally, we can set a speed limit to the speed that certain applications are able to send or receive data to our network shares. While this function is typically used to preserve limited internet bandwidth, for now we're going to leave these options set to unlimited. We're now presented with a summary of the group we're about to create. By selecting Done, our new group is created. You may have noticed that the name of our new group uses uppercase characters. This is simply to help distinguish between the default groups and any groups that we've created. Let's create our final group. As we have two network shares that will be used to allow our users to install software or read the manuals for household appliances, currently the software and manuals folders cannot be written to by anyone other than the system administrator. So we're going to create a group that will allow us to give certain users read-write access to these folders. For this example, we will call this group Super Users. And once again, we will be adding a description to help us identify this group. When we select Next, we're asked to select the members of this group. However, as we've not yet created any users, we will simply choose Next. In Assign Shared Folder Permissions, we need to set read-write permissions to the manuals and software folders. For the other settings, we will leave them on their defaults. When we select Done, our final group is created, so we are now ready to create user accounts and assign them to our new groups. To summarise, in this video we took a look at creating groups in preparation for assigning access permissions to our network shares. We did this by editing our existing users group and then creating two new groups so that we can give specific users read-write access to our accounts, manuals and software network shares. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how you create user accounts and how we use groups to assign access permissions to our network shares.